Welcome to Direct Talk, interviews with leaders, visionaries, and pioneers who are shaping Asia and the rest of the world. Our guest today is professional backgammon player, Akiko Yazawa. Backgammon is considered a classic parlor game alongside chess, playing cards, and dominoes. Two players take turns rolling dice, moving their pieces along a track. The object is to become the first person to move all of their pieces off the board. It is a battle of wits that hinges on the ability to look many moves ahead. Yazawa is a two-time winner of the Backgammon World Championships. We asked her about her secrets to success and what the game of backgammon means to her. In August 2018, a tournament was held in Monaco to determine the Backgammon World Champion. So 6-1, what a roll. Six oh, wins. Akiko, no. she is pouring it on at the end. 177 of the world's top players took part. Yazawa swept the tournament, winning the championship without so much as a single defeat. I'd already become world champion once in 2014, so nerves weren't really a problem. And I'd played against the world's top players many times. There were some moments where I wasn't sure which way things would go, but all in all, I was able to have fun. Backgammon has a long history. It's said to have roots in ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Today, it's a game with 300 million players worldwide. Let's go over the basic rules of the game. The game is for two players. Each has 15 pieces called checkers, which are placed like this at the start. Red moves their checkers counterclockwise toward the bottom right. Black moves their checkers in the opposite direction, clockwise, toward the top right. The objective is to become the first player to bear off all of their checkers, that is, move them off the board. Let's say you're red. First, you roll the dice. The dice turns up one and five. You're free to move any of your checkers. You can move one checker one point forward. The other checker can be moved five points forward. Alternatively, you can add one plus five and move just one checker forward six points. These are the decisions that will ultimately determine the outcome of the game. When it comes to the dice, there's nothing you can do to control the outcome. But you take what you get and choose the best move you can, one after the other, in order to obtain victory. That is the appeal of backgammon. Yazawa is a two-time world champion. What is her secret to success? In backgammon, we use the dice. There are good rolls of the dice and bad rolls of the dice. It's a game of probabilities. Players around the world use computer software to study what the best move is for any given situation. Yazawa has taken that a step further in her day-to-day -day efforts to improve. She took the game records of leading players from around the world and entered them into a computer and conducted detailed data analysis of their moves. If you do the same thing as everybody else, you essentially get the same result. Your opponents have weaknesses. If you can find them and target them, I find that's a closer route to victory than following what the computer says you should do. I figure out how I should attack a certain opponent, or in what situations a certain opponent is liable to make mistakes. Instead of leaving it up to the dice, I try to make it as difficult as possible for my opponent. I remember the characteristic playing styles of hundreds of people I've played against in the past. 
One of Yazawa's strengths is her commitment to getting down to the core of the game. That has been a part of her personality since childhood. When there's something I want to do, I focus and throw myself into it. I narrow my focus and go in deep. I have a tendency to invest myself. As a kid, I really got into building Lego towns. I would try to make buildings as tall as I could. Eventually, they'd be as tall as the ceiling. The ceiling's in the way, I thought. I went to my parents and asked if they could open up a hole so I could keep building. Yazawa had her first encounter with backgammon when she was a junior at university. I went to Egypt on a scuba diving trip. I saw people playing backgammon by the roadside and along the seaside. Upon returning to Japan, she immediately took up backgammon and quickly became enamored with the depth of the game. She took to the game quickly as she developed her skills playing online. Three months after she first took it up, she defeated a man who would later become world champion. She demonstrated uncanny skill. Later, she faced Hironobu Yazawa in the final round of a domestic tournament the two would go on to marry. Backgammon had given her a life partner, but just a few years later, it would test her like never before. In winter 2012, the doctors found that I had endometrial cancer. Without treatment, they said I had less than a year. With surgery, I had a 50-50 chance, no guarantees. And surgery meant removing my uterus. I'd be unable to get pregnant. I felt the doom and gloom descend over me. My life up until that point had been so fun, so part of me thought I should just not get the surgery and let it be the end of me. So I balked. Yazawa slipped into despair, but the backgammon mindset would eventually harden her resolve to undergo surgery. When you think about your next move, you picture all of the possible outcomes. So I pictured the best outcome of surgery and the worst. And then I pictured the best outcome of not getting the surgery and the worst. The decision to die is ultimately a decision that can be made at any point down the line. But the decision to undergo surgery was only available to me at that moment, so I decided not undergoing the surgery was not an option. The surgery was successful. However, as a side effect of chemotherapy after the surgery, her hair fell out, her extremities became numb, and she suffered severe pain. As she continued her anti-cancer drug treatment, she donned a wig, ignored her doctor's orders, and flew to the US on a quest to forge herself into a world-class backgammon player. She set her sights on becoming world champion. I was still undergoing chemotherapy, but it still wasn't clear if I was going to make it or not. And I wanted to leave my mark on the world while I still could. In New York, there are a lot of people playing backgammon along the streets. I encountered moves I'd never seen before. At a tournament, the ability to bounce back from a disadvantageous position is a crucial one. So I intentionally placed myself in a situation where I was at a disadvantage and learned how to turn things around. One time, when I was playing in Harlem, a gunfight broke out nearby, but I remained utterly invested in the game in front of me. In 2014, a year after the surgery, Yazawa traveled to Monte Carlo. There, she took part in the Backgammon World Championships. Despite battling with the side effects of her treatment, she won one victory after another. 
The final match of the tournament was a fierce fight that lasted for eight hours. Her opponent was the first to make six consecutive rows of two or more checkers, walling her in and putting her on the edge of defeat. A player cannot move their checkers to any point that is occupied by two or more of the opponent's checkers. When someone has two or more pieces on six consecutive points, it's called a prime. Basically, I was walled in, unable to escape. No matter what I rolled, I couldn't move my pieces forward. The thing is, the second you give up, it's all over. I kept thinking, trying to figure out how I could turn it around. In backgammon, the goal is to become the first player to move their checkers off the board. Yazawa's opponent would have to break up their prime in order to win. As her opponent moved his checkers, she would have a narrow window to move her own pieces. She made the decision to move one of her checkers forward, leaving the other behind. However, this left her vulnerable. Her opponent captured the checker she left behind, leaving her back at square one. Any point that is occupied by a single checker is vulnerable to capture. Captured pieces are placed on the center bar and players must reintroduce that checker on the furthest point away from them. I had to somehow capture one of my opponent's checkers to win. I had about a 30% chance to come out on top. Just then, Yazawa was given a golden opportunity. Her opponent had a checker that was vulnerable to capture. If she rolled a two, she could capture it and put it back at square one. Anything else, and she was essentially done for. Fighting against the numbness and pain, she channeled everything she had into the roll of the dice. The moment of truth, two and one. She captured her opponent's checker and then went on the counterattack. And then. <laughs> Yazawa was victorious, and her dream of becoming world champion had come true. There were many battles I had to fight to get to that point. My disease, the final match, and all throughout, part of me was scared. But I was able to overcome. I was overwhelmed and the tears started streaming. The decisive factor was that I didn't give up. And that goes not just for backgammon. It applies to my life as a whole too. There are many things that are out of our control. Those things are like the roll of the dice. But depending on the choices you make, you can make things better or worse. When I was facing this crossroads in life, this crisis, backgammon is what saved me. I owe it everything. If you have time to cry, you have time to make an effort. It's true that crying calms the nerves a little, but crying does not change reality. These words remind me to focus my efforts on changing the situation. There have been times where the pain has driven me to tears, but at the same time, focusing my efforts is what saved me. So I remember these words and press on.